All right, I'm gonna preface this video by saying the majority of information about this guy was attained through places that are all in Portuguese. Since I am notably a member of the Eternal Anglo and am not Portuguese, I am relying on translations for a lot of shit. So if I make any blatantly factually incorrect statements, there's a chance it's a translation error, so just bear with me here. I'm also gonna try and make sense of the clusterfuck that was Brazilian politics in the 1900s, and a lot of this video is going to revolve around it, so just word of warning in case that ain't your thing. Now, with that out of the way, it's time for good old Marshall Lot, the man who flew against a hurricane trying to save democracy in Brazil. Henrique Batista Duffels Texira Lot, yes that is his full fucking name, was born on November 16th, 1894 in what is now Antonio Carlos in the state of Minas Gerais. <sighs> Fuck, why do I agree to this stuff? Why can there never be a major historical figure named, like, Dave Smith from New York or something? <clears throat> Interestingly, the Enrique came from his dad, and the rest of his name came from his mom. After a presumably pretty normal youth, he enrolled in a military college in 1905, and if I'm reading this right, he would actually attend in 1911. He was a pretty smart cookie, coming in first place in many of his classes and making first lieutenant in 1920. His army career after this was a pretty straightforward rise to the top. He joined the Army General Staff School in 1925, later serving as an instructor and battalion commander while there, later being promoted to Brigadier General in 1944 and given command over an entire infantry division. He would also serve in World War II as a part of the Brazilian Expeditionary Force in Italy. As for family stuff, nowhere wants to fucking tell me anything specific here, so all I know is that he was married twice and had at least two daughters. Now, here's where things start to get wacky, so hold on to something, because the next couple paragraphs, I don't know how many yet, I'm still writing this, I'm gonna throw a fuckload of names at you, so get ready. The first is a guy called Getulio Vargas. Now, Vargas was a textbook dictator. He'd been in charge since 1930 and would define the next half century of Brazilian politics, so the man had some influence. He was growing rather unpopular since, as it turns out, the people like having democracy and free press and a leader that won't jail them for speaking out. In 1945, he finally caved and announced his attention to re-establish free elections. The military went, yeah, okay, fuck what, this is a ploy to gain more power, isn't it? So the army got his guys together, which happened to include Lot, who would agree to be a part of the coup. He was actually quite fond of the whole Republic of Brazil thing, and the dictators have a bad track record in South America, so he was down to help out. Vargas was forced into resignation on October 29th, 1945, although that won't be the last we see of him. Lot was very well respected and popular throughout the military. He was well known for being a no-nonsense disciplinarian who had no time for bullshit, but still in general being a pretty cool dude. He very much believed in democracy and individuals being beholden to the constitution, which arguably makes him one of the most based military figures of all time legalism gang represent. His loyalty to the country and his countrymen naturally him very popular just about everywhere, and successive governments would attempt to use this to their advantage. In 1947, he was made the military attaché to the Brazilian embassy in the United States. He returned in 1949, just in time to be placed in command of an entire military region, and for Vargas to make his return. He won a legitimate election in 1950, mainly because the previous guy was fucking up repeatedly, so he won quite handily. To his credit, he managed to turn things around somewhat, however, he was still Vargas. A series of political shenanigans ended with the head of his personal bodyguard shooting an Air Force officer dead in the street right outside of the house of his main political opposition, a journalist named Carlos Lacerda, as part of an assassination attempt. G fucking G. The army promptly turned on him again. His attempts to mitigate this colossal fuck-up were in vain, and he finally snapped. On August 24th of 1954, Vargas fucking shot himself and died. The politics only get wilder from here, trust me. Ironically, this was a good thing for Lot. Vice President Zhao Filho took over and immediately made him Minister of War following the prompt resignation of the original minister. Like, within the week. Vargas was still warm and his shit was already being reshuffled. Things were unstable in the country to say the least. Vargas by this point was still quite popular with the general public and the army was on the verge of doing something irrational and Lot's appointment was partially motivated by this. He was popular and respected and most importantly was not one of Vargas's buddies. Oh yeah, and there's an election in a year. I sure hope this won't be extremely fucking contentious and almost lead to the end of Brazilian democracy. <laughs> of course it won't. That part comes later. On October 5th of 1955, the coalition of Social Democrat leader Juscelino Kubitschek and somewhat radical left populist labor man Jao Gallart won an actually free, fair, and legitimate election. Fucking sorcery, I know. So what's the problem? Fucking Vargas is the problem. As it turns out, Kubitschek and Gallart were both old friends of the guy, and already you should see where this is going. Everyone promptly freaked out and immediately started whispering about a coup. Lot the gigachad that he was, told everyone to calm the fuck down. They legally won, the constitution says they won, and therefore they will be inaugurated and the army will support them, capiche? This wouldn't stop people from trying to overturn it though, and in all honesty, the plotters could have succeeded if one guy hadn't run his mouth like a dumbass. Okay, this this next section is gonna come hard and fast, so just be ready. On November 1st, a funeral was being held for a general who had just died. Lot had just finished giving a speech when one Colonel Yurandir Mamad asked to speak. He went on to say, I'm just gonna quote it exactly, 
It would be an indisputable democratic lie if the presidential regime, which includes an enormous sum of powers in the executive, would allow the victory of the minority that would be embodied in the inauguration of the elected. Lot promptly fucking exploded. He was, after all, both a believer in staunch discipline and the integrity of the fucking republic. Skipping past the borderline treason for a second, Mahmoud wasn't even supposed to be speaking since he wasn't even scheduled. Our country is in the middle of a political crisis and you want to fucking make it worse? I'll have your ass for dinner! Lot wanted him swiftly punished for insubordination, if nothing else. He attempted to go directly to Philho on the 3rd to get permission to do this, however, in a twist of fate, he was incapacitated and in the hospital, putting the President of the Chamber of Deputies in charge, temporarily, think Speaker of the House, a man named Carlos Lutz. Lutz would be President for three days, the 8th to the 11th, and the clusterfuck that occurred during that time was a wonder to read about. Lot would give a report on the army, directly stating that he believed that the majority of the army is in favor of backing the Constitution in this situation. Lutz basically went, okay, very interesting. Also, my Mod can't be punished, lol. This was likely a ploy to get rid of Lot, since he was kind of the one thing preventing them from refusing the election results, and it absolutely fucking worked. On the 10th, Lot resigned as Minister of War. The entire armed forces promptly went into crisis mode. Lutz would move to start reshuffling the military, but it would come too late. Already many generals who liked democracy and coincidentally were buddies with Lot met and started scheming. A meeting was convened at the residence of one General Odilio Dennis, with several generals in charge of numerous garrisons around Rio in attendance. Dennis told him that the Navy and Air Force were also standing by, along with a large chunk of the army. At one in the morning, on November 11th, 1955, Lot rang Dennis and told him to get the boys ready. We have a government to topple. At dawn, troops moved to secure the capital, firstly occupying the police barracks and the headquarters of the local phone company, then settling in around the main government building. Lutz and his goons knew what the fuck was happening and promptly scrambled aboard the cruiser Tamandere. Lacarda and Mamand were both on board at the time as well, so the whole gang was there. The army fired on the ship, and a very tense standoff ensued. They tried to sail for Sao Paulo, believing that the local governor, Janio Kedros, would support them. However, in the last moment, he told the group to go fuck themselves. Back in the capital, Lutz would be impeached by a pretty large majority vote, with the president of the Senate, Nuru Ramos, assuming temporary office. I told you there would be a shitload of names. Lutz realizes the jig is up, so they return to the capital with their hands up. Except for Lacarda, who fucks off to Cuba. Lot would promptly force his resignation. Philho would try to return a couple weeks later, however, he would be sharply rebuked, and Ramos would be secured as president until a proper transition of power would occur on January. January 31st of 1956. This became known as the November 11th movement and was Lot's finest hour. For his actions of, you know, saving democracy like a chad, he was reinstated as Minister of War and would receive both a golden sword and the Grand Cross of the Military Order of Christ. He would also be promoted to Marshal in 1959, the highest military rank in the country. Not all kings wear crowns, ladies and gentlemen. Kubitschek's time in office was surprisingly peaceful and prosperous. Of course, though, this is still South America. Lot was never afraid to use the military to his advantage, several times quelling unrest with force. Tanks tend to get people to calm down, as it turns out. Lot would run in the 1960 election as the Social Democrat candidate and did pretty well, however, he would be defeated by that Kedros guy from earlier. Interestingly, though, Gallart would be re-elected for vice president. The two positions were elected separately, just roll with it. Now, if everything goes smoothly, a functioning democracy in Brazil can actually be established. <laughs> <laughs> Did you forget where you were? This is South America, fool. Kedros was actually pretty solid. For about seven months before he resigned for no fucking reason. But it is believed that this was an attempted power grab that backfired spectacularly. Now, Gallart is the president. Leftist in charge of an American country, you fucking know the CIA were planning to get rid of him within the fucking hour. The military immediately began planning a coup, which Lot would protest, basically begging them to see a reason and not follow through with this. However, this one he unfortunately couldn't stop, since he was pretty much retired from active duty at this point. He would end up being arrested, during which he refused to be detained by anyone of lower rank, which is based as shit. He was only in jail for 15 days before being released because he was just that good. In 1964, the military would coup the government with CIA backing and promptly pretty much ruin the country and sold it out to the United States. Ungrateful little shits, I know. Lot would step back after this, since he fucking despised the military regime. He would attempt to run for governor of Rio de Janeiro, however, he would be blocked because fuck you. To make things worse, his second daughter, Edna, was murdered in 1971 probably as a result of her criticism of the military regime and their habit of torturing people. Something like that wouldn't exactly endear a person to a government. He spent the rest of his life in relative obscurity, since military governments have a habit of getting rid of people who disagree with them, so he mostly kept his mouth shut. He died in Rio on May 19th of 1984 at the age of 89, not quite living long enough to see the sun rise on a free Brazil. He was denied military honors because the government was run by utter assholes, however this would cause a public outcry, and three days of mourning were declared by the governor of Rio. He was a staunch legalist and supporter of democracy and constitutionalism to the day he died. The man who saved the republic once unfortunately didn't have a chance to do it again. Fate is a fickle bitch. 
rich, I suppose. It's likely that had he won the 1960 election, Brazil would be a much, much different place. And that was Lot. Not a whole lot to say other than democracy is non-negotiable. Man was based beyond space, and in my opinion, he is the model of what a good soldier should be. If only his comrades in arms were like him. I suppose there's no point wondering about it, though. Can't change the past, after all. Although, if you happen to believe in multiverse theory, then it's likely that some timeline out there saw a victorious Lot. What a sight that would be. Anyways, that about does it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.